mechanism to the test. It all starts with this punch press. It cuts and presses steel into the shape of the chain's inner links, which looks a lot like a figure eight. Incredibly, it generates 10,000 links per hour. Each of these figure eight links has been made to interconnect and their contours allow them to travel easily across the bike's gear sprockets. They send samples of the links to a measuring station to confirm the space between the holes is precisely 12.7 millimeters. The tester also gauges the diameter of the holes, which must be accurate to within a fraction of a millimeter. Then the links bake in an oven at more than 1,500 degrees Fahrenheit. The blazing heat followed by a quick cool down hardens the steel. They now shovel these inner links into a donut shaped machine. They add ceramic and silica powders and pour in a small amount of water. They then screw the lid on this machine. It shakes vigorously, causing the powders and water to form an abrasive paste that polishes the links. They load the polished inner links into a metal basket and shut the door. Machinery plunges the basket into a series of chemical baths to give these inner links a nickel Teflon veneer. The nickel Teflon surface will resist corrosion and its smooth texture will allow the chain to travel easily over gear sprockets. The bike chain's outer links get a different kind of finish. Unlike the inner links, they don't travel over sprockets, so a simple nickel plating will do. They're now ready to assemble the chain one section at a time. Tubes feed the parts one by one into this assembly machine. Gripper arms adjust their position to assemble the links to other chain components, such as retainer rings and spacers. The machinery presses pins into the links holes to secure the assembly. Then grippers move the completed section of chain down the line. It takes a whole lot of little pieces to build one short section of bicycle chain. The sections are linked together in one long chain, which now winds by an inspection station to be examined for flaws. After that, the chain takes a dip in hot oil, which lubricates the links to prevent squeakiness and wear down the road. The chain exits the lubricating station and travels by wads of absorbent material, which soaks up the excess grease. A laser tool then signals the location where the chain is to be cut, and a blade chops it at the exact spot. <laughs>